Many of you know that I officially came out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and uh, one of the best things about it was the way it enabled me to publicly show support for the people who inspire me and give me courage. And I'm here to do just that tonight for one of my heroes, Laverne Cox. <laughs> Laverne has educated so many about who transgender people are. Those whose gender identify differs from their assigned sex at birth. For years, she has worked with GLAD for transgender equality. And she's having a moment right now, producing a documentary about Cece McDonald, a trans woman forced to serve jail time in a men's prison for defending herself, becoming the first trans woman of color in a leading role on a mainstream scripted television show, Orange is the New Black. <laughs> Laverne also scored a huge success for the LGBT community when she made headlines by speaking the truth about trans women to Katie Couric and her viewing, viewing audience. But she's always been a groundbreaker. She was the first trans woman of color to produce and star in her own television show, VH1's Transform Me. She was also the first trans woman of color to appear on an American reality TV show, GLAAD Media Award winner, I Want to Work for Diddy on VH1. <laughs> she did not win the job, okay, but thank God, because can you imagine what we would have lost if Laverne just ended up working for Diddy? <laughs> Laverne is working for us. Every LGBT person, questioning teen, and straight ally who thinks the world should be a more kind, compassionate, interesting, beautiful place where we try to bond over the ways in, we, in which we are alike instead of attacking each other for our differences. GLAAD gives the Stephen F. Kolzak Award to openly LGBT media professionals who have made a significant difference in promoting equality for the community. This year, it is an absolute honor to present it to an LGBT icon and longtime friend of GLAAD, Laverne Cox. Oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, GLAAD, for this amazing honor. I, I am so happy to, to accept the Stephen F. Kolzak Award this evening. Uh, uh, how you feeling tonight, GLAAD? How you, you doing okay? I, I have to say, I'm really, really overwhelmed. I'm still not used to getting awards. I, I'm, I'm an African-American transgender woman from a working class background raised by a single mother. We are, are not programmed to, 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 to think we should receive these kinds of awards, but, but, but I like to think that things are changing. Oh. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so deeply honored, and I was, I, I've been a fan, a huge fan of your work for, as an actress for many, many years, and I, I, I was so deeply moved to find out more of your story a few months ago. And that is really what we're here for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for, for more of our stories as LGBT people. And, and, and I'm so moved by, by the work that GLAAD has been doing, particularly over the past year, to make sure that the T is not silent in the LGBT <laughs> community. Last year, I, I got to serve on a panel of all trans people of color that, that GLAAD organized for the National Organizing Institute at the LGBT wow. Center in New York City. I was, was really proud of that, and, I, and I'm really proud that, that GLAAD helped Cece McDonald come to New York City for the first time 
to tell her story to various media outlets. Glad made that happen. And, that, and, I, and I was on a Google Hangout when they were doing media training for CeCe McDonald as she prepared to tell her story to the world after being incarcerated for 19 months. So, so we should make some noise for Glad for... <laughs> For, for being a national LGBT organization that is attempting to lead the way to tell more transgender stories. I, it's, I have to say, it's really hard for me to stand here tonight and receive an award. Just yesterday, one of my transgender sisters, a woman by the name of Monica Jones, was found guilty of a crime in Phoenix, Arizona that is basically called manifesting prostitution, something like that, which basically means that as a trans woman of color walking in a certain neighborhood, you can be arrested for prostitution just for walking while trans. That happened in Arizona just yesterday. So there is so much more work that needs to be done to make sure that that never happens again. And, and, and my dear friend, Raina Gossett, and, and from the Sylvia Rivera Law Project in New York City, tweeted today, why are LGBT news organizations not reporting on this injustice. Why are they not reporting? So we have so much more work to do, but, but, but I, I do want to thank a few people. I want to thank Netflix and, and Lionsgate. Yes. And, and, and I want to thank Jinji Cohen and, and the entire cast and crew of Orange is the New Black. I, it is a dream for me to be able to go and work with all of you every day. And, and you've made my dreams come true. And, and I'm so happy um, to have this opportunity. I still want to thank my, my agent, Paul Halepo. And um, in 2007, an amazing thing happened. Candace Kane became the first transgender woman to have a recurring role in a primetime television show. It was ABC's Dirty Sexy Money. We should make some noise for Candace Kane. I would not be here if it weren't for Candace Kane. And, and, and in 2007, after Candace Kane had that moment, she's a major possibility model for me. I, I made postcards and I sent them to about 500 agents. The old, you know, the whole actor sending out postcards, old thing. And I got about four meetings, and one of them was with Paul Halepo. And, and I have to tell you that my, my first audition with him, I kind of choked. I kind of choked. It really didn't go well. But, but Paul saw something in me that day that I didn't quite see in myself. And I, I, I love you, Paul. And, and Paul is like this amazing agent who makes you feel like you are his only client. And he has done so much for me. And, and, and for years, this is, a, this is a big deal, for years I've been, I did my first movie like 16 years ago. And for years I was trying to have a career as an actor, doing what I love to do most and was told, repeatedly by agent after agent that they didn't know what to do with me, that I would not work. And, and Paul, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Paul, so thank you so much. I, I also want to say, I, 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 you, you saw in the clip that I got to accept the, the GLAAD Media Award for I Want to Work for Diddy about five years ago on, uh, on, on the GLAAD stage. And <laughs> I, I, I like to think that um, after thinking about doing that show that Jennifer Lopez and I both have, have some memories with Diddy that we want to try to forget. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Lopez, I had to do, I don't know you like that, I'm sorry. J to the L-O, hello. I love you. Um, but, but I found out after I did that show, I, <laughs> I, I found out that Sean Rankin, who was one of the executive producers of I Wanna Work For Diddy, came to the president of GLAAD at the time, before we started shooting, and said, we have this transgender woman on the show, how should we handle that? And, and the president of GLAAD said, let her take the lead in telling her story. That's good, right? That's good. And, and that's exactly what they did. And, and I'm so proud to say that I got so many emails and messages from transgender women of color all over the country who said, I've never seen a transgender woman, a black transgender woman, represented in a professional way on TV ever before. And that happened because the producers of that show said, let's let her take the lead in telling her story. 
That is the way we should be proceeding when we, when we try to tell trans stories. And I'm also really proud to say that I, over the past six months, I've gotten to travel the country and Canada talking to college students. And I've met so many college students over, over the past six months who've told me that, that my character on Orange is the New Black has allowed them to have conversations about who they are. That is why we're here. A, a lovely young man at Vanderbilt University said to me, when I tell people that I'm trans now, they say, oh, like Sophia on Orange is the New Black? <laughs> and then they move on, and it's not a big deal. And that is the power of, of yeah. That is the power of, of what our media representations can do if we, if we um, have the courage to tell um, truthful stories. Gingy Cohen, I don't think when she was writing, came up with the idea for the show, said, I want to change the way transgender people are represented on TV. I think she just said, I want to tell human stories. I just want to tell human stories. And, and that really should be the goal for everyone who wants to tell stories and, 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 and that we tell diverse stories. I love the shout out um, from Miss Naomi Campbell to Miss Carmen Carrera. Hey, Carmen. And, and I think it's, I mean, Naomi reminded us too that LGBT people are also people of color. And so, so I, I, I just want to, since I have the stage, I just want to remind each and every one of us that, that social justice means that we have to, have to look at our, our internalized racism. We have to look at our internalized homophobia and transphobia. I met this, um, I'm going to wrap up soon. I, I met this young person on Spirit Day, which is an amazing day where we, um, we, we advocate for the ending of uh, bullying of our LGBT youth that GLAD started a few years ago. And last Spirit Day, I, I met a young person by the name of Davey Rahija in, in Charleston, South Carolina. And, and Davey was part of a youth organization called We Are Family. And Davey, just so you know, identifies as a fat, hairy, brown, femme, transmasculine, queer bodied magic pony. I, I, I love Davy, and what and I was Davy is a brilliant young person, and what Davy in, in, in their remarks on Spirit Day base, basically said that I am an inheritor of cultural trauma. I have been both a a survivor and a perpetrator of cultural violence. And for me, that was so important because it reminded me that each and every one of us has the capacity to be an oppressor. So, so I just want to leave you tonight with, with, with Davy's words and to encourage each and every one of us to interrogate how we might be an oppressor and how we might be able to become liberators for ourselves and for each other. Um, thank you so much for this honor. Bye.